Get ready for unique, rare, and little-known treasures from the golden age of radio. You're listening to The Amazing World of Radio with Adam Graham. We are temporarily back from our hiatus here on The Amazing World of Radio a bit sooner than I expected so that we can bring you a program focusing on James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones died on September 9th at the age of 93 after a magnificent acting career that began in the 1950s and continued to this decade. You could try to quantify the achievements and his place in American culture by reciting the awards he won, which included multiple Emmys and Tonys, a Grammy, a Golden Globe, and an honorary Oscar and the Kennedy Center honors. But really, for most Americans and for most people who uh, consume American pop culture, what defines our memory of Jones was the great moments on screen and the great roles he played. His career had obvious highlights that most anyone my age will remember, such as him being the voice of Darth Vader, uh, Mufasa in The Lion King, and then, of course, you had his performance as Terrence Mann in Field of Dreams and that beautiful baseball fans. For a generation when CNN was the 24-hour news network, his booming voice declared, this is CNN. Yet Jones was an actor who could be remembered for so much more. For my part, I think of how he played Chief Thad Green in the math net sketches on the PBS series Square One TV, which sparked my love of detective fiction. I remembered him in an old Hallmark film I watched with my mother, What the Deaf Man Heard. And I also received a gift of an audio recording of him reading the New Testament. And in the days since his passing, I've seen videos that highlight his roles in so many films and television programs, and also cultural events, such as his spoken word performance of the Star Spangled Banner at the 1993 Baseball All-Star Game, or his 1960s recitation of the alphabet on Sesame Street, which became a classic of that series. Despite having one of the best voices of his generation, Jones's massive career rarely touched the world of audio drama. While he did some dramatic readings, he only performed in, as far as I can tell, four full cast audio dramas. And today we're going to bring you the earliest of these. Like the episode of Heartbeat Theater that we played at the end of August, this episode comes after the technical end of the golden age of radio. But it does show that in some cases that dividing line can be a bit arbitrary. The golden age of radio officially ended on September 30th, 1962 with the end of network radio drama. Two years later, ABC attempted to revive it with Theater 5, a a five-day-a-week dramatic anthology series that served up radio dramas from a variety of genres ranging from human interest to mysteries or science fiction. You never quite knew what you would get when you tuned into an episode of Theater 5. James Earl Jones appeared in an episode towards the latter half of the series run. At this point, he was best known as a stage actor. He was one of New York's finest Shakespearean actors, while also appearing in many contemporary dramas. He had made his film debut in a little film called Dr. Strangelove the previous year, but still he was not well known outside of New York drama circles. James Earl Jones appearing on Theater 5 was a coup all around. Theater 5 got to feature an up-and-coming dramatic talent, while Jones gained exposure to an audience that was not familiar with his work. And now we're going to present that episode from 
May the 4th, 1965, here now is Incident on US-1. Now just turn around real slow and don't get any stupid ideas, okay? Like you said, you ain't gonna give me no argument, no argument at all. Now look here, kid. Uh, mister, there ain't no need. I, I told you, there's the cash register. Help yourself. Five bills? Five crummy bills? Mister, I don't want no trouble. You can have whatever's here. Just take it and go, okay? Theater 5 presents Mr. James Earl Jones in Incident on US-1. Town. Be there another ten minutes. This is okay. Huh? Suit yourself. Won't be much traffic night like this. You might be stuck here for a while. A friend of mine works here. I'm okay. Oh, you know, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> Makes the lousiest cup of java on the strip. Tell him for me. Kid. Cigarettes. You got any cigarettes? The machine right behind you. I mean, I, I need some change. Out of one. There you go. You, uh, gonna be wanting anything else? I'm closing up. Uh, yeah. Cup of coffee. How you take it? Heavy on the milk. Yeah, the first guy that's been in all night. I guess any guy that come out in a night like this would have to have a good reason, huh? I ran out of smokes. That good enough? If it ain't, I got a better one. Like running out of loot? Now just turn around real slow and don't get any stupid ideas, okay? Ah, look, uh, kid. The name is Mr. Mister. Now look, I don't own this joint, and personally I don't care if you steal the floorboards. I get paid one way or the other. So I stash the hardware, okay? I ain't gonna give you no argument. Oh, I know that. Now, just take off your tie and put your hands behind your back. I'm going to lay this gun down long enough to tie your hands. But don't get any ideas about trying to grab it. That's right. Just just toss the tie on the counter. Now, take off your belt so I can tie those big feet of yours. Then I'm going to stuff a few napkins in that big mouth and tie up the whole package nice and pretty with a handkerchief. Like you said, you ain't going to give me no argument. No argument at all. Now, look here, kid. All right, mister... There ain't no need. I, I told you. There's the cash register. Help yourself. Five bills? Five crummy bills? It's been a slow night. Don't put me on, man. Where's the safe? In the kitchen. But it's empty. Sure it is. Now, look, I'm telling you the truth. It's Saturday. The boss never leaves the take here over the weekend. You know, you ain't the first guy ever come in here with a gun. Come on. Come on. The belt. Now, look, you want the combination? Okay, five to the right, left to five, right to five. Go see for yourself. I got plenty of time. Let's have the wallet. It's in my back pocket. Just hold that hallelujah position while I see what we have here. Nothing there. Nothing there. Well, I'm going to see what we have in this little old secret compartment. Ten bucks. Oh, man, you're loaded. Now, look, mister, I don't want no trouble. You can have whatever's here. Just take it and go, okay? In the minute I'm out of here, you're on the phone describing me to the highway patrol. How are you going to describe me, pops? Tall, thin, black? I'd be up to my armpits and fuzz before I got to the next intersection. All right, so pull out the wires. There's no skin off my nose. Sure, pull out the wires, pop. And remember, I'm right behind you, and I'm getting nervous every minute. Now, just... Just give the wires a good hard pull. Oh, you, 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 you do good work. Now back to the counter. We'll get you all nice and bound and gagged. You don't have to do that. If I'd known, what are you going to do while I'm out in the kitchen? What was it now? If 
Five to the right, left back to five, and right to five again. Okay, have it your way. Only point that gun away, huh? You're shaking like a guy in a cold turkey ward. I'm cold, Pops. I'm so cold I feel like I'm never going to get warm again. That's why I'm shaking, Pops. I'm just cold. And, uh, why don't you have your coffee while it's nice and hot, huh? Oh, you care, don't you? Okay, get the coffee. And then we go back in the kitchen and you can open the safe. All right, here you go. Nice and hot. Oh! Okay, now I'll call the shots. Stay away from that counter. Put your hands over your head. But, oh, my hand. You'll live. Okay, okay. So you're king of the hill. What you gonna do? Shoot you, maybe. Yeah, and what, what would that get you? Satisfaction, Make maybe. Make you happy, huh? Yeah, sure. Look, Pops. The name's Mr. Kid. Look, mister, let me go, huh? What for? To try your luck further down the highway? I know you won't believe me, but I've I never done nothing like this before, ever. Oh, I believe, I believe. Look, I just had to have some money. Join the club. You think you're the only guy ever needed money? Oh, please. Hey, uh, yeah, evening, uh, officer. Man, what a night. Yeah, sure is. Let me have a coffee in Danish and uh, some change for this. I've got to make a call. Yeah, the phone's out. It's been out all night. The storm. Well, I'll give it a try. The rain's let up a little. I just tried just before you came in. It's dead. Well, I'll call from town. Here's your coffee. Well, what kind of Danish? Wife you... always worries when it's like this. Uh, I don't care. Prune. You got a paper? There's usually three or four papers around. There's nobody been in. Uh, all, all right, fella, hold it there. I was just going to feed the mud. Oh. <laughs> uh, you want anything else? Just holler. Okay. All right, old fella. It's coming. It's coming. Hey, kid. Uh, yeah? Is that today's paper in your pocket? Oh, yeah, today's. Uh, mind if I have a look? I just want to see how the dodge is made out. You can keep it. Oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. That's okay. You didn't spill it. Mm. Uh, you live around here? Yeah. Yeah, in town. Uh-huh. Whereabouts in town? We just moved here. How'd you get out here? I uh, didn't see any wheels out front. I uh, hitched. What, to come out to a diner in the middle of nowhere? You got something against people? Let's see your ID. Huh? Uh, hey, kid, you haven't got anything better to do. How about wiping up that mess on the counter, huh? Oh, sure, sure. Kids, <laughs> if I didn't tell him to wipe it up, he'd wait till it evaporated. Why don't you say you works here? You didn't ask me. Well, that's right, I didn't. Hey, uh, where's Joe, by the way? Uh, wife's sick. He's taking the night off. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, tell Joe I'm sorry. Who shall I say told me? Tell him Al, the cop. Yeah, I'll do that. More coffee? No, no, I, I got a call in. I'll see you. I don't figure you, Pops. I come in here and pull a heist, you get a chance to turn me in, and instead you cover for me. I don't dig. Maybe I got my reasons. So are we square or what? Maybe I want the pleasure of taking care of you myself. Look, here's the money. Let's just forget it, Okay. Okay, Pops? The name's still Mister. Now you come on over here and sit down. That's right. Now take off your belt. And remember, my hand's never gonna be out of reach of that gun. <laughs> Mister, you're going to let me go, let me go. You had your chance to turn me in and you didn't. So what with the gun and the belt bit? You're scared, ain't you? No, I ain't scared. You were scared when you walked in here. You were scared when you pulled the gun on me and you're scared now. Okay, so I'm scared. I want you to be good and scared. So maybe you'll think a couple of times before you do it again. I said, have it your way. I figure on having it my way as long as I got a gun and you ain't. Oh, man. What have I gotten myself into? What are you, some kind of creep? Did your hand hurt? You care whether my hand hurts? I asked you a question. No, I scald it with coffee every day for kicks, like I'm a masochist. Oh, yeah. Here, put some butter on it. Then hand over your belt. Hey, what are you going to do? Just do it, okay? Put the butter on your burn first. Oh, man, I sure pick them. 
I'm sorry about that. Yeah, we'll save the tears. Don't give me none of your lip. All right. I'm sorry. I believe you. You care. All right. Now put your hands behind your back. How old are you, kid? Twenty-one. Twenty-one pushing fifty. Yeah, I figured you for about that age. I got a kid myself. You got a kid? That's the best news I've heard in the last five minutes. Yeah, yeah, just about your age. Everybody's got a kid my age. I run into guys my age all over. Come on, what do you want to tie me up for? Now you listen to me. I'm going to ask you some questions. And whether you walk out of here depends on your answers. You get me? I got your message a while back. This your first heist? No. A mad dog Earl. I asked you a question. Well, there's got to be a first time for everything, right? Wrong. Dead wrong. Anyhow, not for this. Now, look, I didn't figure you for a regular heist, and I can tell from looking at you, you ain't no hype. No, like I'm an oil burner, man. Thanks a lot. Look. I'm no chippy, mister. I figured that wasn't the reason you needed the dough that bad. My old lady needed an operation. I had to raise bail for my father. I wanted to put myself through school. What do you want from me? You're not so tough. You know, a lot of times a guy in trouble does things he wouldn't do otherwise. Okay, but this ain't the answer. What difference does it make why I needed the dough? I had to have it. I bet you ain't even handled a gun before. I've been around. Oh, sure, sure. Then how come I'm holding your own gun on you now? If I tell you I got a big deal waiting for me and I had to get the bus fare or I'd blow it, would you believe that? What kind of a deal? I know a guy who'll give me a chance to drive in the drag races on the coast. Oh, you're a race driver? I don't know. But I got a chance to find out. But I got a show there before Thursday or I'll never know. How much do you need? The bus fare is 20 bucks. Well... You got 15. What do you mean I got 15? I got the change for the buck I bought smokes with. Five bucks from the till and the ten you got out of my wallet. Hey, are you putting me on? Why would I do that? Wait a minute. Just let me get something straight. I come in here to rob you. You get the drop on me. You get a chance to turn me over to the boy in blue and you don't. And then you tell me to keep the dough. What's the catch, mister? You pull a stunt like you tried tonight, maybe you get away with it, maybe you don't. If you're lucky, you don't. You get caught. You get caught good the first time and you pay up then and there. Or you start running. You can't ever stop. You run a thousand miles and you think you're safe. Then you turn a corner or you open a door or you just look up sometime. And there it is. And you might just as well haven't run at all. You pay up in the end anyway. Only by then you owe so much you never get out from under. You spend the rest of your life paying off. Well, look, I wasn't thinking on making a career out of it. I know a lot of guys who were going to do it only once, just the one time, just to get them out of a jam. And it was easy. And the next time they got in a jam, and believe me, there always is a next time, they said to themselves, okay, just one more time, just one more time. Now, you don't believe me. Ask some of them. Any visitor's day. Pops. You're right out of an old TV movie. Yeah, sure. Crime pays. But it ain't worth the price. You sure you ain't really Santa Claus? Ah, is that mud again? He wants to go out. All right, fella, I'm coming. Wait a minute. I'll just undo your belt. And... Yeah. All right, old fella. All right, I'm coming. All right, old boy. There you are. Now, just stay off the highway. What? You still here? You really mean it? I mean, Pops, you something else. I don't get you. I could have cut out of here just now, while you were in the kitchen. Why didn't you? Go figure it. I got a couple of things to say to you, and then you can go. I want you to keep one thing in mind, boy. Nothing stays bad forever. And if you look around long enough and hard enough, you'll find somebody to help you over the hump. Mister, you haven't lived where I live. I mean, in my skin, mister. There's nobody looking to help a guy my color over the hump. Man, they're lining up to push me off the mountain. Suppose you'd gotten away with it tonight and I had to report it. You know the description I'd have to give the cops? You spelled it out yourself. And you know what you'll be to people who read about it? Not just some kid who pulled a heist, but some kind of monster. 
You, you, you better go to join the march, man. Every time somebody like you gets into trouble like this, it puts your people right back to the starting line. And don't make out that you don't care, because you care, boy. Because you've got a lifetime to live in that skin of yours, and your kids will all have their lives to live in theirs. Yeah, and you're telling me that unless you happen to be white, stay out of trouble. Nobody else gets into trouble. Oh, no. I'm not saying that's the way it ought to be, but I'm saying that's the way it is right now. And the way it's going to keep on being unless kids like you change it. I'm just one guy, mister. Just one tall, thin black boy. And you got to make that guy the best guy you know how. And other guys got to make themselves the best they know how. And other guys, and other guys. And you got to start 500 years ago to make up for lost time. Can I go now, please? Sure. Go. Uh, kid, I'm sorry I had to be a little rough on you, but I wanted to make sure you'd remember. Here's your wallet. All right, I'll take the wallet, but you keep the dough, like I said. You sure are something else. I'm not giving you the money. I'm just lending it to you until you get yourself back on the road. My first pay, 15 goes right in the envelope. Hey, what do I send it? Here. Joe's Diner. Uh, put down Fred. Fred. Now get out of here. The rain's let up. You shouldn't have any trouble getting a hitch to the next town. Yeah. Well, cool it, okay? And, uh, let's keep in touch. I mean, I'd, I'd like to write to you, okay? Maybe you'll write to me? Yeah, sure, kid. Sure. Don't hold your breath, punk. Shut up, Joe, or I'll have to keep you quiet with this knife. Ah, maybe I should anyway, just for kicks. Teach you not to try to get that cop in here after I told you to lay quiet. But you've been nice and quiet and cooperative, giving me the combination and all. Like you said, it's no skin off your nose, so I'll just forget it. If you just lay there nice and quiet. Ah, let's see, uh, five to the right, back to five... And right to five. Ah, now let's see what we have here. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. Nearly 400 bucks. Ah, that's a lot of hamburgers, huh, Joe? Oh, uh, by the way, in case you got any ideas about trying to get loose and calling the cops, I think I ought to tell you the phone's out of order. So you just plan on relaxing until somebody finds you tomorrow morning. <laughs> Well, that's real considerate of you. I was going to ask to borrow your car anyway. Just to town, you understand. I'll leave it in front of the police station where they won't have any trouble finding it for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, you'll be getting 15 of this back. I lent it to a young kid with a real honest face. <laughs> On top of old Smokey, all covered with rust. If the good... my ticket book. I figured it must have fell out when I... Oh, here it is. Hey, what's wrong in here? Theater 5 has presented Incident on US-1, written by Hal Hackaday, directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, James Earl Jones, James McCallion, and Robert Dryden. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Mr. Lee Bowman. 
We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. That's Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production. Welcome back. A really solid radio play. It's odd to have Jones playing a character who is called Kid. He was 34, and his voice doesn't sound young or even that much younger to my ears than his voice as I've heard it throughout his career. But I saw an interview he did with the CBC back in 1996 where he said that because of his stuttering, he went through a period from when he was four to when he was 14 that he didn't speak at all because he was too embarrassed and it was too painful. And then when he started to speak, his voice had changed and sounded like that. So he very well may have sounded like that in his 20s. And what I liked about his performance is that he became this character. He captured those aspects of being this desperate, directionless young man in his early 20s. The cockiness and confidence, but also the way it's masking fear and uncertainty, along with a bit of naivete. It's interesting because I don't think this is a natural part that you think, yeah, let's cast this commanding 34-year-old. But a great actor can still play against type and get inside the skin of that character and make that character come alive. This has an amazing twist ending, and for many aficionados of the series, they rank this as one of the best episodes for that reason. Right until the last five minutes, it was actually a pretty straightforward tale of a young man down on his lot committing a Bosch robbery and a diner employee cutting him some slack and trying to put his life on the right track. But the ending makes you question everything you heard. Obviously, Fred didn't turn the young man over to the police primarily because he didn't want the police asking a lot of questions, because if the police even looked into this situation a little bit, Fred would be busted for sure. You also sense that Fred didn't want to kill anybody, particularly if he didn't have to. He simply wanted the money in the safe. Was there some degree to which the warnings he was giving the young man were sincere? Maybe he had his own regrets, or he knew people who did. Or was it a case of just getting good advice from a bad person with bad motives? And, of course, we get an open ending. We don't know what happens to the kid, and we don't know what happens to Fred. What it looked like before, like, the very last minute was that Fred was heading for a clean getaway, at the end, I don't like his chances with the officer's return and Joe being able to tell the officer exactly where Fred was going thanks to him spelling out his whole plan. But it's a story that leaves you to think about what we heard and what happened after the story. Now, I understand the artistic idea behind that sort of ending. While I'm not a huge fan of the storytelling approach in general, and I think there were some episodes of Theater 5 that overused it. It works here. And it may work better today than it did when it was first broadcast. This is a story that invites re-listening because once you know the twist, so much of the story has a bit of a different context. Now, it should be said that unlike a lot of the Golden Age programs that didn't re-air at all, there were some re-airings with Theater 5. Five, but nothing like the on-demand ability to re-listen to programs we have today. For those of us who loved and appreciated so many of the contributions that James Earl Jones made to American culture, this episode is a great treat, and I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you enjoyed Theater 5 and are curious about the series, you want to learn more or listen to more episodes, I do want to highlight the work of Dr. Joe Webb and the Theater 5 Project. In 2022, the people involved in the Theater 5 Project provided major upgrades as well as cast information on the series so that we had better quality sets and we knew who the actors were. Uh, and this year is the 60th anniversary, and with some uh, new reels found in California and Florida, they have an even better quality collection with many upgrades and sound quality that includes one episode that has previously been lost. It's all available for free of charge. I'll include a link to the 60th anniversary set in the show notes. It's a bit of a mouthful to say, so... If show notes don't work for you, then you can just go to theater5.blogspot.com. That's theater5.blogspot.com with theater5 spelled T-H-E-A-T-R. And they have a link to the new set on their very first post. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day, and I want to thank Rhonda. Rhonda's been one of our Patreon supporters since October 2020, currently supporting the podcast at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Rhonda. But that will actually be all for today. And we will return to being on hiatus, but we'll be back as was initially planned on October the 27th. For the first of two fall specials, you won't want to miss them. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.